clients in pajamas. Yeah! Hi right, guys, welcome back. Today we're still kind of talking about homeostasis, which is maintaining that internal balance to allow for our cells to continue functioning and thus living. But today we're going to talk about the feedback loops that are found in homeostasis. Now there's two main types, negative feedback loops and positive feedback loops. And we're going to start by talking about negative feedback loops. So the negative feedback loops is when some kind of stimulus causes an imbalance in our homeostasis in one direction, but when our body and our cells try to fix it, adjustments are made in the opposite direction. So for instance, the stimulus causes an imbalance in one direction and adjustments are made against it, opposing it. Think about it this way, <clears throat> your temperature, your core body temperature. So let's say you are, it's the middle of winter, you get cold. You're not too happy about that. It is cold outside. It's snowy and miserable and windy and we just hate it. Now, yes, our body maintains its own temperature that's why we're warm blooded but that doesn't mean that it can't be thrown out of whack by disruptions like environment so the cold outside if we stay out there too long especially if this poor soul isn't wearing a jacket that's actually going to cause their internal temperature to drop as well to get colder so their internal temperature is going to go down so far, so good. So that's the interior or internal temperature. Your body temperature. That is going to decrease. Now what happens is your body is going to go through steps to try and prevent that. Your blood vessels are going to, they're going to constrict, so they're going to kind of close up a little bit to try and keep the blood vessels away from the surface of your skin because that's how we actually lose heat. So we're going to try and keep all the heat further in, in your muscles. And you're also going to start shivering. Ooh, so cold. Shiver, shiver, shiver. Now, here's the thing. When you shiver, and even if you try making yourself do it now, you'll notice that your muscles tend to get a little warmer because what you're doing are these little per or these little microspasms and these small rapid movements actually cause your muscles to generate heat. Kind of like if you, you feel your hands getting warmer. So these small rapid motions of your muscles actually generate heat. And that heat is going to help to increase your body temperature. So because of the blood vessels dilating and your temperature increase or your muscles shivering, shiver, 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 that's actually going to cause your internal temperature to increase. So the cold outside was causing your internal temperature, your body temperature to decrease. Your body made adjustments. It dilated, sorry, not dilated, it constricted the um, blood vessels and it caused your muscles to start shivering and this allows for your body temperature to increase. Notice how we're going in opposite directions. The stimulus caused our body temperature to drop, 
our adjustments are causing our body temperature to rise. So you notice that it's up, they're opposing each other. That's what we mean by a negative feedback loop. On the same token, What if it's hot outside? You know, after all, it's summer right now. Or at least the time I'm making this video it is. So it is blazing hot outside. Humid, sticky, sun's beating down at like a heat index of 103. Super duper hot. Now what's going to happen is that heat is going to be absorbed into your body and that is going to cause your internal temperature to rise. Now we already talked about in our a previous video why that's a bad thing. So your body is going to go through adjustments to try and bring that temperature back down. And how it does that is first it is going to dilate your blood vessels. So what it's going to do is kind of stretch them open a little bit more. That's going to allow more blood to have um, to be have more access to the outer layer of your skin, which means that the heat can kind of evaporate to the surface of your skin. Then you know that you're going to sweat. Now the reason why sweat is important is because yes, it's gross and it stinks. Believe me, I get it. But that layer of liquid on your skin is going to absorb the heat from those dilated blood vessels. So it's actually going to pull the heat out of your blood vessels and store it on the top of your skin. And then the heat from the environment is going to evaporate the sweat away, taking that heat with it. <clears throat> so it's not so much that the sweat cools us down because it's wet. The sweat cools us down because when it evaporates, it draws heat out of our body. So we are sweating. Might feel all kind of gross and whatnot, but the sweating draws the heat out of our skin and it evaporates, pulling the heat away, causing our body temperature to drop. So the environment create, or the, the stimulus in this case being the hot air, summertime air, the stimulus caused an imbalance by raising our body temperature. Our body goes through adjustments of dilating the blood vessels, and generating sweat in order to lower the blood vessels. So that's how negative feedback loops work. All right, let's talk about positive feedback loops. Now in this case, when a stimulus is made, in one direction, the body is going to build off of it and work in the same direction in order to make adjustments. Now that might sound counterintuitive at first. I mean, the negative feedback loops make sense. You get hot, you want to cool down. You get cold, you want to warm up. Even the glucose levels in your blood, when the levels rise, your body takes steps to lower it. When your glucose levels get too low, your body takes steps to raise it. But why would your body want to work with the stimulus? Well, there are some cases where the body just simply cannot go back to homeostasis until certain things are in order. An example of this would be a pregnant lady. I know that looks really weird, bear with me. Then we have 
the baby. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Anyways, what happens is the baby is going to start to move. So the baby is going to really, 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 really start to move. Not just those little motions that, you know, you can feel through the belly. But when it starts really moving and rotating, that is going to cause the cervix to stretch. So the baby's going to move. So baby moves, and this causes the cervix to stretch open. Well, the stretching of the cervix actually increases the contractions. And you want to know what the contractions do? They cause the cervix to stretch more. Now we may not want to think about being pregnant as being out of homeostasis, but it actually is. The presence of growing and nurturing the baby inside for nine months is very taxing on the woman's body. And she can't get back to homeostasis until the baby's out. Which is why when the baby starts moving and it causes the cervix to stretch, we don't want to go through it negative feedback loop. A negative feedback loop would be creating some kind of adjustments to prevent the cervix from stretching and closing it up. Well, mama's body doesn't want to do that because homeostasis cannot be achieved until baby is born and body has had a time to, you know, go back to normal. So the baby starts moving. It causes the cervix to start stretching open. The stretching of the cervix increases the contractions which gets baby moving even more and these increased contractions have the effect of also increasing the stretching of the cervix so cervix stretches causes more contractions which causes more stretching see how they're kind of working together they're increasing and building off each other that's how these positive feedback loops work all right i think that's pretty much it all right, so if you guys have questions, let me know. Otherwise, just be amazing and awesome, and I'll talk to you guys in class or see you in my next video. All right, take care, you guys.